I am Kanika Narang. I am a senior research scientist at Meta right now. I work on generative AI space, especially working on on-device models and multi-model models. That I love to dance. Uh -huh. And I've been trained in an Indian classical dance form called the uh, Kathak. It's a funny story. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a teenager. Uh, in a sudden surprise turn of events, I ended up taking computer science in my undergrad. From there on, I started loving the idea of research, and especially in this area of machine learning or AI which led me to work on research projects and research internships in the United States. And that pursued me to do my PhD uh, uh, further in this area. And then moving on, I'm here at Meta working on state-of-the-art models, building cool stuff and working on cool technology. My current area of focus, as I said earlier, is on-device modeling. Um, so at Meta, we are interested in building a model which are smaller in scale in the range of say 500 billion, million to 1.4 billion parameters which can fit on wearable devices uh, like we have smart glasses, we also have VR devices. Along with that I am also working on multimodal models uh, where you can have modalities like images or speech or video and then process them uh, in this multimodal space and ask which can lead to multiple uh, different applications like asking questions about it, generating photos uh, of your choice and similar things. We wanted to uh, figure out what users like, especially um, in ads, where we show users um, some kind of a pop-up question and they can click if they want, if they like this or like uh, if it does not. And that was essentially, the idea was to get more feedback from users rather than just looking at how they're behaving in the, on the platform, on the app. But that did not really go as well as we wanted to. The, the adoption rate was lower. The lesson learned from this project, I would say, would be, um, I think, to listen to user. Uh, always have users in the back of your mind whenever you're designing a new core deck or a new algorithm. Because as engineers, we have a different way of looking at things. We, we are excited by more technical problems um, or challenging projects, but it doesn't have to have a user appeal to it. So that's, I think, one of the biggest takeaway from this project. And even on, and I, any project I work with, I would like to look at from a user's perspective. Um, why would they use it? Why, why do you think they would engage with this kind of technology? There are multiple challenges in the space. Um, I would go back again to on-device or edge computing. There are multiple challenges in terms of first performance, having these models perform as well as their bigger counterparts. Another thing is also to deploy these models. Uh, we, the hardware does not go as uh, in sync with the software because um, hardware iterations take much more longer, whereas software, it's actually much easier to iterate on it. So we have to make sure that the, these bigger models can fit into our, uh, our devices, create bots or create AIs which are more natural, which seem more natural, which are more natural, uh, human-like, have human-like conversations, and they can hear multiple modalities. Right now, text is the main form of modality people interact with. How about uh, videos? How about images and speech? And or maybe all in all of that in at the same time. So envisioning that that future where you have a robot, which also seems like a, a can can process all these modality at once and be more human-like and sound natural, not robotic. I think that's the uh, goals I'm looking at uh, in the space. For the next five years, making making models smaller, uh, multimodality, making it natural. I, as an engineer, I think we are more focused on building the best technology, building that best new tech which does the best, uh, does the best have the best performance on these benchmarks. But making sure that they are adapted into our uh, into our day to day life, we find use cases that they could be useful for us. I think that one key piece where we have to work with um, 
with PM, with people, with users, with UX designers, with PMs uh, to figure out those applications. Similarly, I would also say responsible AI or making sure that these generations or these AI are, are, are safe and more reliable. That's also another one key piece. I think uh, the this AI space has to, or the AI tech or enthusiasts, or everyone has to take care of. For aspiring AI researchers, um, I would say that this is a golden time to come into the space. The market is so democratized. You have so much resources to start on. You have access to models like Meta has open source their models, so it's so easy to use them and play with them. My suggestion would be to go out there, build something on your own using these tools. You take courses on uh, Coursera or Udemy or all these uh, websites and build that profile, network with people. Everybody is very heavy or bullish on this on the space, so network with like-minded people, build on that side project and get your hands dirty. I think that's the best way to learn.